Hello fellow traders, welcome back to today's video. Now in today's video, I'll be talking about institutional buying and selling. Okay, I've gotten a lot of requests about this topic. So today I'm going to break down everything you need to know, how to identify them and how do you actually draw them. Now I want to start off this video by talking about why it's important for you to identify institutional buying and selling. Okay, you need to know how to identify them because uh, you always want to be trading with the institutions and not against them. Okay, so if let's say you have a trade, let's say you have a trade and um, you, you do know that, for example, that there is a supply zone over here that institutionals are selling over here, then you want to make sure that you exit your position uh, before the institutional players come in. Okay, conversely, let's say uh, you're looking to buy, uh, then you want to buy where institutional players are buying. Okay, so that is why it's very important to be able to identify institutional buying and selling. Okay, so institutional buying and selling is the same as supply and demand zone. Okay, but uh, please do not confuse that with a support and resistance zone. Support and resistance zone is just kind of like a line that the market is uh, you know, reacting to. But that doesn't mean that that is the level that institutionals are going in at. Okay, so that's a very important um, differentiating factor between uh, support and resistance versus supply and demand zone. Okay, so in today's video, I will show you how to identify just that. Okay, previously I've you know, recorded a short video about how to do this, but I think we get a lot of questions about the specific steps. So in today's video, I'm going to break it down further for you. Okay, so I've listed over here, how do you identify institutional buying and selling? Okay, when you look at a chart, uh, in order for you to identify institutional buying and selling, uh, you need to look at two factors. Okay, you want to look at the departure of the level and you want to look at the tightness of the base. Okay, and you also want to look at... Uh, in the base, how many candles are there? Okay, so this is the overview of it. Uh, I'll go through each of this uh, in greater detail. So let's talk about the first one, which is the departure of level. Okay, so you want to look at your charts. Okay, this works uh, irregardless of what time frame you're looking at. It could be the H4, it could be the daily, but uh, I would recommend you to start off by uh, looking at the day chart because normally the day chart is very clear. Okay, so you know, if you are new to this, you're still struggling, uh, make sure to start off with the day chart because it's cleaner. Uh, if you cannot identify the day chart, then it's going to be very difficult for you to identify in the H4 or even the M15 chart where, you know, price is a bit more choppy. Okay, so start off with the day chart. Okay, so right now what we are looking at is we are looking at Euro dollar daily chart. Okay, so I've identified a few levels over here. Okay, so let's talk about this. Okay, uh, notice over here, why did I draw this uh, level over here? Okay, let me just uh, zoom in. Okay, because you look at this level, look at the departure. The departure from this level, what happens is that you have one candle, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bullish candles of solid buying. That is eight days of solid buying. So this is where the institutional players were buying. This is where it's kind of like the origin of the move. Right, so the departure of this level is great. Okay, so this is what you want to do when you're trying to identify institutional buying and selling. You want to look at um, when price bounces off the level, is it a strong movement or is it a weak movement? Okay, let's compare this over here. Okay, this movement up that I just showed you versus this movement here. Okay, let's say you are looking at uh, this uh, movement over here. Okay, look at the departure from this level up. It's not as energetic as uh, this um, region. Okay, let me just see if I can uh, do it nicely for you. Okay, here to here, earlier on I mentioned this um, bullish movement versus this movement or this movement. You do realize that at this level, price only had two uh, big uh, white candles and then it started retracing. So if you were to compare this zone over here and uh, this level over here, this level is much stronger because of the departure of the level. Okay, so if you look at this example here, so, okay, you can see that from this level, what happens is that uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, five candles of solid buying, okay, and in fact, uh, if you measure it, that is about uh, 500 pips movement, okay, this one over here, it's, um, it did about a 551 pips movement, and this one over here, barely even did, I believe, uh, about 200 probably, 
it, it barely even did 200 pips. So that's what you want to look at when you are trying to identify uh, institutional buying and selling. Okay, you want to be looking at the departure of the level. Okay, ask yourself how much did price move since uh, the area that you're interested in, um, you know, that you identify as a uh, institutional buying and selling area. Okay, that's the first factor. Now, let's talk about the second factor. The second factor is must be in conjunction with the first factor. Okay, that means that if you only have the first factor, but not the second factor, then uh, that is not a valid institutional buying and selling zone. Okay, that's not a high probability uh, trading zone. Okay, you need both uh, feature one as well as feature two, which are listed over here. Okay, so what do I mean by this tightness of the base? Okay, you can see over here in this case, the base is only one doji candle and it started rallying. Okay, in this case, this base was about two candles one candle, two candles. Okay, so you want to look for um, those kind of zones which has very tight base, meaning that the range is really small. You can see that this range is really small and it doesn't have a lot of candles. Okay, so what does it mean when a zone does not have a lot of candles? That means that price didn't have a huge fight there. That means price just dropped to the level and it just started rallying. And that is a very strong sign that there's institutional buyers or sellers at that level. Okay, but if you are at a zone which you know the, the, the market moves something like this, let me show you over here, where you see that there's a, a lot of struggle. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven candles before price really started rallying. When price struggles at the level, that's a sign that that is not where institutionals are buying. Okay, because if institutional players are buying or selling, the price is going to move fast. So in this case, you can see it's a very clean. You just have one candle, one day of a consolidation, and you start third rallying. In this case, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. But price didn't really take off uh, very fast after that. You can see that it's still very choppy. It went up, it went down, it went up, it went down, and it slowly creep up. Okay? So this is what you want to do. You want to find uh, bases which are tight. Okay? So when we talk about number of candles at the base, ideally you want to have a less than a seven, uh, six candles, sorry. So let me just write less than seven candles or maximum six candles, okay? Okay, so let's look at... Uh, this example so that I can further explain uh, what I mean. So over here you can see that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is more, more than the six candle rule. Okay. Uh, personally, I, I like to use the six candle rule. If a base has more than six candles, in this case seven candles, then it's not a good base. Okay. It's not a good uh, area where institutional players are actually buying and true enough if you look at this movement the movement here is, is not very smooth compared to this movement here you can see this movement here it's very nice and this movement here you upon two days of consolidation this one two and then you see you have one nice candle two night two this kind of like a doji and three you have a nice up trust after two days of consolidation okay so this is how you find it number one you look at the departure number two you look at the tightness of the base and when you're looking at a base, you want to make sure that there are not more than six candles at the base, okay? Because you do not want to see a fight. You do not want to see a tough fight within the level. You want it to be a very clear sign that that is a strong level. You do not want to see levels which, uh, which the bulls and the bears are fighting very hard at that level, okay? So now that I've covered that, I want to show you how you draw it, okay? Because I've talked to you about why it's important to know this, uh, because you can use it as your take profit levels. You can also use it to identify uh, areas where uh, you want to avoid trading or also uh, where you want to enter a trade and look for trade opportunities, which is what I like to do, okay? I like to look for trade setups at a uh, supply and demand zone, okay? Of course, if I'm looking to buy, then I'll look for um, demand zones. And if I'm looking to sell, then I'll be looking at supply zones, okay? But do take note that this is not a full-blown trading strategy, okay? This is just identifying the levels. You still need a trading strategy in order to execute this, okay? So please, again, do not take this uh, knowledge that I just shared with you out of context. Do not just, you know, uh, start trading every single supply and demand zone. 
okay that's going to blow your account okay if you need a day trading strategy i have a three day trading guide for you just check that out the links in the description so please please do not uh, use this in the wrong way okay that's always my worry whenever i record this kind of videos because uh, i see a lot of people always do it in the wrong way and they take whatever i share out of context and when they lose money you know they write in angry emails okay and that's not uh, what we like to deal with okay so let's talk about how to draw okay let me just clear this and i'll show you how i draw them okay just clear this up we'll, we'll go through a couple of examples so that uh, you can see how i do it okay uh, in the previous video that i recorded i did not actually really go through in depth uh, how to draw it uh, so in this video uh, this will be the part that uh, that I'll add on onto how do you actually identify this institutional buying and selling. Okay, so let's just go back in time. Okay, I'll find some form of uh, you know example so that I can show you. Okay, over here you can see that uh, over here this is a nice uh, institutional uh, level. Okay, this is where the uh, institutional traders are selling. Okay, so therefore this is a supply zone. Okay, so how do I know that this is a supply zone? Okay, as always we go back to the steps. Okay. Number one, we identify the departure of the level, okay? So you can see that this departure is not bad. You have a very nice uh, extended range candle, okay? A very strong bearish candle down. And then after that, it's consolidated and then it drops down again. So this is a very strong level, okay? From the departure, you can see that. The next one I talk about is we want to look at the tightness of the base and number of candles at the base, okay? So in this case, let's, uh, let's go back up and uh, let's count, okay? Uh, you have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so five is lesser than the seven candle rule. Okay, so this is a strong level. Okay, it's a very strong level. And uh, so how do you draw it, right? So you identify this is a very good point, but how do you draw it, okay? So what I like to do is that if you are drawing a supply zone, uh, then of course you want to cover the uh, highest point because you're trying to draw supply, you cover the highest point and you just cover the uh, candle body. So in this case, I will uh, connect to this uh, candle body, okay, and I will draw it like this, okay? So I repeat myself. The first thing you want to do is you want to cover the highest point, okay, for a supply zone. You want to cover the highest point, which in this case is this, uh, this candle high here, which is uh, 1.14122. And then what you want to do is you want to uh, draw a triangle and connect it to the candle uh, body. Okay, whichever is lower. If this is a bearish candle, then just connect it to the close. Uh, if it's a bullish candle, just uh, just whichever is lower. Okay, whichever is lower, you get a nice zone like that. You do not need to draw it like that. Okay, just draw it like that. Okay, so this is your supply zone. Okay, uh, it's a bit difficult to understand, to, to explain in this video, but I'll do my best. I'll show you more examples, so hopefully uh, you can get it. Okay, I will show you probably five, ten examples uh, to show you how I draw it so that uh, you, you can really understand. Okay, so there are plenty of levels over here. You have this one as well. Okay, you have this one as well. Let me just, okay, so why is this demand zone? Okay, just now was supply zone. This is demand. Why is this the demand? Okay, look at the departure. You have one, two, three, four. You have nice candles moving from this base, right? Four nice candles are bursting up. Okay, it's a very nice movement up. So the question is, why is this a demand? Okay, as I said, the departure is good. And let's look at the base. You have a about one, two, three. You have about a three candle base, okay? Three candle base. So the departure is good and the base is tight, okay? So this is a good level, okay? So how do you draw this? Okay, how do you draw this? Uh, I, I said that uh, for the supply zone, you take the furthest price. So in this case, the furthest price, since it's a demand zone, you're going to take the lowest, not the highest instead. Okay, you're going to take the lowest. Okay, and then you're going to connect to uh, this candle body over here. Okay, and then you just draw it. In this case, you can see that uh, this case, uh, when price came back, you, you had some form of a, um, you know, retracement or bounce off this level. Okay, let me just draw it properly. But eventually, it was broken. Okay, so this is why uh, just trading off a supply and demand zone on its own is not enough. Okay, you must have a trading strategy. Okay, in fact, in this case, you could see that the bounce, um, the retracements were getting shallower. Uh, this one retraced here. This one made a shorter retracement up, just a slight, slightly shorter retracement. And after that, there was no retracement, it just broke down. Okay, so this is only to help identify where the levels are. It doesn't mean that uh, you're going to enter uh, directly at the levels without looking for some form of uh, price action trigger or confirmation. Okay, 
now you have one more over here as well. Okay, this one. Okay, so uh, maybe you can try to explain uh, to yourself why this is a good level. Okay, maybe you can pause this video to try to uh, identify, you know, what makes this a good demand level. Okay, okay, so hopefully you've done that. Okay, why is this a good demand level? Let me explain to you. Okay, so you can see the departure is a good departure. Again, you have one nice candle, two and three. And if you count this whole movement up, then uh, this is a very nice uh, demand zone. This is a one candle base. Very nice one candle base. And there's a departure. So how do you draw this? Okay, something like that. I will draw it something like that. Okay, cover the low of the candle and look at the body of the candle and just uh, extend it out. Okay, so that's how you have this demand zone. Okay, now let's look for more examples so that uh, you really understand. Okay, over here you have another one which is very similar to uh, the one that I previously shown you. So you can see that uh, the pattern is always roughly about the same. Okay, you, you roughly always see the same patterns. And if you can identify all these kind of institutional uh, buying and selling, then uh, it's very easy for you to know uh, where you should be looking for your trade setups. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, same thing, the departure is very nice. You have one candle, two, three, four, five. You have very nice departure and you have a tight uh, base. You have a one, two, three, four. You have a four candle uh, tight base, okay? And after this basing, it just broke out, okay? So how do I draw it? We cover the highest point, which is the, this candle high, okay? We cover the hand, candle high and we just take care of uh, this candle body. Okay, this candle body in this case will be the close of the uh, candle. Okay, you do not want to draw it like this. Okay, you want to cover this. Okay, so if it's a bearish candle, then uh, you want to uh, draw your, your rectangle to cover the uh, close of the candle. Okay, this is what you want to do. You want to draw it like this. And this is your supply zone. Okay, how about this over here? This is also a nice one candle. Okay. You can draw it like this. Okay, same thing. You look at the departure. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, very nice departure of this level. This is a strong level. Okay, how do you draw it? Just cover the uh, the lowest portion of the uh, candlestick and then uh, connect it to the body of the candle and that's it. And that's where you have your um, demand zone. Okay, in this case, you could see that uh, there is some form of uh, unit bounce. You see, we drew it like that. Okay, let me just show you. Okay, there was some form of bounce, but eventually it was broken. Okay, and uh, you also have this one over here. You can see that there are really plenty of it. Okay, this one over here. So, okay, so you can see the departure one, two, two nice uh, bearish and engulfing patterns like this down, and uh, just one basing candle. Okay, one basing candle before uh, you know it started selling down. Okay, so this. Uh, you draw it like that, you cover the highest point and you cover the candle body. In this case, it will be the open of the candle body, not the close. Okay, remember you always want to make the uh, zone bigger. So if the open, if it's a bullish candle, then uh, you want to take the open, the opening price. Okay, if it's a bearish candle like uh, this one over here, then you want to take the closing price. Okay, whichever makes the zone bigger, that's how you're going to draw it. Okay, so in this case, you draw it like that. Okay, so let me just show you one last example and then I uh, will call, uh, you know, just wrap up this video. Okay, over here, okay, you have a very nice, uh, nice pattern over here. Okay, same thing, you have a good departure. So in this case, this is your basin candle. Okay, but uh, you won't want to draw it like that because there is a lower low here. So you just want to cover it like that. Okay, to cover uh, this candle low as well. And uh, you take this uh, candle uh, close. Because this is a bullish candle and uh, as I mentioned, you could do it like that or like that, but always make the zone bigger. Okay, the, the rule of thumb is to make the zone bigger. So if, the, if it's a bullish candle and price closes higher, then you want to draw it uh, like this. Okay, and that's how you draw your uh, supply and demand zones. Okay, so let's go back, uh, just do a quick summary and uh, we'll just end off this video. Okay, so in summary, I talk about why it's important for you to identify institutional buying and selling. Okay, because you do not want to fight with the big boys. The big boys are the ones that moving the market. You want to align your trades together with them. Okay, you want to avoid uh, selling, you know, into a demand zone. Okay, similarly, you want to avoid buying into a supply zone. Okay, so I talk about how you identify these institutional buying and selling levels. Okay, what you want to do is you want to look at the departure of the level as well as the tightness of the base and looking at the number of candles at the base. 
Okay, lastly, I went through how do you draw it. Okay, so I understand it's a bit difficult, right? It might be difficult at first, but uh, you know, as you keep practicing, it gets easier, okay? You will train your eyes to be able to see it just the way like I do, right? Just flip through the charts and I can see it easily, okay? But that comes with experience, okay? So I, I foresee that we're going to have a lot of questions regarding this video. So, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us or just leave a comment down below uh, so that we can clarify any, you know, challenges you are facing with this uh identification of institutional buying and selling okay if not thanks for watching this as always uh, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video if you've gotten value you want more videos like this please uh, let us know because that's how uh, you know we have some form of feedback as to what kind of content to create for you to better serve you okay so that's it thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video